Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL 18 Hasu League. Round of eight, Klauso versus Byaxer. And it's been fun matches thus far. 12 o'clock location. We got Klauso starting as the yellow Protoss, bottom left hand corner. We have Byaxer starting as the red Protoss. This is on Apocalypse. Which, uh, one thing is since it is rampless, so you have these interior ramps. And I feel oftentimes what Terran will do in this map is they'll, they'll try to fight up to, especially with Klaus' style, they'll try to fight to this plateau right here. And then if they can hold this plateau where you just have the two ramp entry points, they can end up in a really good situation overall. But ignore that. We've got an early probe walking out. Is this going to be a proxy two gate? Because this is a very, very fast scouting probe. This is, this is, uh, this is for shenanigans. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's going to just be proxy one gate. Especially considering uh, Klaus really got punished. And I'm wondering if by extra thinking, you know what? He tried to skip the initial Vulture last map and he played a little bit financially greedy. I was able to punish it with that initial Zealot Dragoon combo. Maybe go for one gate. wonder if there's a bit of lag and they were able to figure it out here in between. So yeah, I think it's just going to be proxy one gate. So this isn't... 100% all-in from Byaxer. You do need to inflict some damage. It can be very, very disruptive to your Terran opponent because you end up with Zealots in the base a little bit more rapidly than usual. Klauso is building a pretty solid defensive line where you can kind of scoot in between here, defend the SCV line. Is going to cap gas, so he didn't go for anything super... So thus far, he's not done anything crazy as far as economic greed goes, but it is going to be difficult defend this off. The one advantage of this is if you can fend it off, if you can get the, the, the initial vultures out in short order, particularly before there's a lot of dragoons, this can actually end up being something that works against uh, a Protoss player. Because you kind of have tech that's stranded out here and it's easy to plant mines and create some chaos. And it looks like he just missed that, by the way. Oh, a huge raid from DeWalt as well. Thank you. By the way, guys, I want to uh, congratulations to DeWalt for winning this the so as far as the pro league goes dewalt took first place which is great well deserved he'd been in second place for such a long period of time but i want to comment dewalt oh this is big for klaus by the way coming in here and seeing nothing dewalt's level of play was always pretty high but it really has kicked up lately and i'm kind of excited for him and upcoming possibilities so keep an eye on him because i feel like there's big things so initial zealot making its way in that marine getting tagged now, the big question is, is does this SCV get tagged? Because losing this, we already have another SCV out. First SCV dies. Oh, the probe gets the kill on the Marine. Great kill. SCV trying to move up to finish that factory. The longer this factory is delayed, the worse it is for Klauso. And the more Zealots you have against just pure Marines. It looks like the SCV is trading off. Pretty decent job from Klauso thus far. Trading around, but it looks like he's going to end up losing yet potentially another Marine. And this factory's been delayed quite a bit. And there is a certain stage where you end up with too many Zealots against what's here. And that SCV... It, oh, no! It did that last move. So the factory's just been delayed considerably. We got a third Zealot making its way shortly. This Zealot is going to back up and let some shields recharge. But thus far, it looks like there's been a significant amount of economic damage. A lot of Marines dead. And a very delayed factory. Enough where a Dragoon is going to be able to service. We have range just starting. Kind of a probe just hanging out watching his buddies get gas right there, though. Uh, and we got a fresh Zealot. A Zealot that was able to retreat, recharge some shields, and play from here. So it's going to be challenging for Klauso to establish a natural expansion. He's charging out, trying to get that bunker in place. But as soon as this Dragoon is here with these two Zealots, depending on target fire, this is going to be a challenge. So the Vulture able to find the weak Zealot. Nice picking off of the weak zealot, but this is still a situation where micro is required. So three marines versus a dragoon, usually with vulture support, kills the dragoon. It looks like that bunker is going to establish, so nice defense from Klauso. And he actually, at the end of this, ends up two workers ahead and is able to plant that command center before his opponent. So, night, so considering how bad that could have been. It ended up uh, a decent defense from Klauso overall. He's actually going to able, be able to establish that command center now ahead of his opponent. And it looks like there is a second gateway down. So it's technically two gate from here with the mid map. But now you kind of have that flip situation where Byaxter needs to play a little bit more aggressively with his Dragoons. Because if Vultures and Mines and whatever not 
are able to filter through Dragoon te testing up, uh, checking the shield to make sure that command center is there. But if they're able to filter through, you can end up with a lost gateway mid map and some of those economic, the bit of the economic punishment you got in the early game ends up evaporating. Range just about finished. We have no SCVs in position right here and I don't see any SCVs nearby actually. So a siege tank will provide some support, but these Dragoons might be able to harass that bunker and potentially get a siege tank kill. Yeah, so they're gonna attack the edge of that. And Klauso a little bit, yeah, finally getting an SCV out here. Some additional SCVs and transfer. Ooh, that could have been bad. Tacking a little bit and emptying everything to run into this. But this is again a situation where he's got to be careful. Lost all of his Marines and now it's four Dragoons. No Marines in the bunker. A siege tank exposed and one mine down. So by axe, you're getting some good value. The SCVs retreating into the bunker. The Siege Tank trying to do what it can, it has to be careful because four Dragoons can easily wipe this out. And I think that bunker with the four Dragoons and the fifth Dragoon approaching, it's going to drop. Yeah, now it's gone. Not that it was protecting anything but that single Marine. The Marine going to get wiped out. And Byaxter in great control in this early game. Klauso completely breached right this second. SCV stymied. Lucky he hasn't lost Siege Tanks already. He's done a pretty good job of protecting him at the very least. One of them very, very damaged and might need to lift and retreat this command center. Yeah, starting to pull that back now. So Byaxter really capitalizing on Klaus, so playing a little bit over aggressive there. Vulture taking a bit of additional damage. That siege tank getting repaired. And Klauso, his delay on that siege tech, punishing him once again. Not able to get... One thing with going for the mine upgrades is it, as far as mine upgrades ahead of siege tech because it works really well if you can get your vultures out in front to plant them out here so it pushes the dragoons back but when you have the dragoons already on the front pushing against a lot of this oh, oh unfortunately bad mind drag there for byaxer was trying to trick it and kill it not able to pull the trick off but the delete delayed siege tech wow he's actually establishing this before so he's got three siege tanks but dropping this before they're really sieged up also getting turrets which is wise natural expansion up and running by the way from byaxer Baxter up a healthy amount of workers. Looks like he wants to grab the 6 o'clock as well. Pretty solid start here in the early game. Robotics. A long way. Looks like he wants to drop some additional gateways. On top of that, finally the tank sieging behind that command center in a defensive slot. But firm map control for Baxter. Economic lead. Uh, is easily going to be able to drop and plant and hold that third. Vulture speed upgrading. Engineering Barry Barracks starting to float out. Still no Comsat station, by the way. So it's just this one turret to prevent Dark Templar walking out on the ground, which is wise considering everything Byaxter was doing. He knew there wasn't probably going to be a, a DT drop behind this. Really didn't have the time or gas or anything else to make that happen. Observers start uh, are going to start to take the field. Now, Klauso in a bad position. He's not 100% dead, but definitely has a cliff to climb here. Getting that armory up. He can go ahead and play... Towards that plot, he's really got to hope that Byaxter makes some sort of greedy fumble here. Some missile turrets getting planted just in case to help against Reaver or potential DT drops in the midst of this. But Byaxter has a lot of leeway to do a whole lot of shenanigans in the midst of this. He could go ahead and grab a fourth base if he wants, probably in pretty firm position here. Maybe the play here for Klauso is to try to rely on Vultures able to sneak Sneaking out or maybe grab a quick third. It looks like some vultures are going to be able to whittle through and get behind enemy lines. This is, he needs to do this and get them into the, the worker lines if he absolutely can. Looks like he's instead getting repelled. But that does create a little bit of chaos out in the map. He's going to be able to get to the 6 o'clock. Looks like he is going to be able to get to the 6 o'clock by Axter fumbling a little bit. And this is actually big for Klaus, so he's going to get a lot of workers as a result of this, and that actually evens up the worker count. So he's still a little bit behind economically because this is three bases, and that's uh, bases that can be produced. But that's exactly what he needed right here to get right back into this. So it's the 75 unit curse right here for Byaxter as the Vulture is able to slip through and really give Klaus some breathing room in this now. Support bay constructed. We have a shuttle building as well. Third factory going up for Klauso, so 
It's kind of interesting to see the three factory. I wonder if this is going to be th a third factory with the second machine shop dropped. I'm used to seeing four factories in the mid game. And Cla is okay. Now he's getting the the mines out here in the forward position. I'm not sure how successful he's going to be with this. This is greedy, honestly. In my opinion, he's down 20 supply, exposing his siege tanks mid map just for that gateway. But it looks like he is going to be able to establish it. Zelt leg speed uh, shuttle not in place quite yet to save all this. But Klauso not not dropping his usual mo. I think he's going to make a hard push for this plateau. The dragoons are already in place to try to repel that. We do have some Zelts and a shuttle to potentially engage it as well. Right now, his mid map control is going to go ahead and grab that th third command center. Interesting play going up to third command center, sitting on three factories. Maybe kind of a factor of just some of the economic play. Donating a couple vultures as they're able to sweep through. See that there's already Dragoons up on that high ground. The Siege Tanks are going to go ahead and retreat. The Observer checking out the current situation. So Klaus Sophie's able to hold and establish this and Bayaxer doesn't get wind of it. And if he's able to continue to move the vultures out, might be able to push right back into this. It looks like this is going to be a movement to three base Arbiter. Um... <clears throat> oh, three factory. I think this is Klauso. Okay, now he's adding a fourth factory. Um, and a fifth. So gonna go ahead and get five factories. That's plenty once he gets this third base up and a couple more SVs on the line. I presume he's still gonna sit back. I don't know what Klauso will do, honestly. Like, other players, I, I would say they're gonna sit back on those three, bla uh, three bases and wait for plus two weapons, plus one armor. He's just getting that second armory up and has already started plus one armor. But I could see Klauso, before that plus uh, two armors in place, making a push, considering how aggressive he is, making a push for the six o'clock plateau and trying to end the game right there. Uh, just knowing the architecture of the map. It looks like Bayax are setting up to go ahead and grab a base bottom right. Some vultures are filtering that direction. And the Dragoons aren't quite in place to engage it. A single vulture going to move ahead to try to scout things out. So the Nexus is constructing. Observer diving down as well. And this does create... So, speaking of that play, this does create pressure on Byaxter where he needs to dedicate a good amount of Dragoons to bottom right, but he doesn't He doesn't want to over-dedicate because otherwise that opens up an opportunity for Klauso to unsiege and fill in the gap. So it looks like he's starting to move troops that direction. The Vultures are going to try to run back out. And that, that could play well for Klauso if he continues to cycle attacks here bottom right is basically draw, try to draw Byaxer out of position here and then create an opening where he can barrel up and again take that high ground because again it's very very threatening when Terran are able to hold this high ground plateau. In the meantime, fourth base about warping up. Byaxer, 40 supply lead, very healthy supply count. Getting some good gateways, he's going for, he's going to go for the D-Web play again. <coughs> we saw this in game one, did not work out for him. I miss this. A Reaver dropping in the main. Looks like it got a good amount of damage done. Has caused the armories to burn. I'm going to chalk that up to being, again, sick day play there. Mine's getting cleared bottom right in the midst of that. Looks like a handful, a good amount of workers dispatched. The armory's going to be really the big win here would have been able to, would be to take those double armories out. Looks like they're going to get repaired back up. Missed it. Maybe it was like what I thought was an observer out on the map. Anyway, this is going to give time to get D-Web in play. And D-Web could be very, very interesting again, considering that if, if you look how clumped a lot of these siege tanks are, we do have a Wraith out in the field. The Wraith not going to do much uh, against the Corsair. It'll pop pretty rapidly. But in the meantime, Klauso just about to hit that plus one armor. And again, I think... The play for him is just to sit on three bases, get up to 200 supply, let Byaxter have that fourth. Although Byaxter, I think, in a pretty solid situation, again, in the midst of this. One problem for D-Web is, is you just really need to micro it extremely well. And if you don't micro it really, really well, it can... It's just, I think, easier to, to micro. I mean, it's better to... Uh, I think the problem for D-Web is just Stasis does the same thing. And it's so much easier to work with, right? I think that's the hit on D-Web. So D-Web's kind of fancy. But that's not to say this is illegitimate. It's just harder to execute. That's what it comes down to. One advantage of D-Web is you can D-Web the missile turrets and whatnot. 
Well, so noticing the perimeter check, Abel, well, is Bayaxer going to go for it now? It's got a large army staged. I don't see the Corsair moving forward. And it, what, what is Klaus doing? Is he going to grab that 9 o'clock? I feel like that would be very, very ambitious. He's got an SCV in that position. Some Zealots sweeping around. One Zealot lands. And the rest are going. And unfortunately, this is a big troop donation for Byaxer. That's actually going to even the supply up. Pretty close. 20 supply differential here. Plus two weapons now hitting for Klauso. And he's got a pretty solid shell. Oh, also some mines claiming some victims right there along that right-hand side. Now the Corsairs are starting to press forward. And you can see the Goliaths and the Vultures starting to sweep a little bit. And they found an empty plateau. Army a little bit separated for by extra mid-map. I'm not sure that the Corsair have been spotted as of yet. Vulture sweeping across. They're going to be, I think, the first to see it. So yeah, they see the Corsairs up ahead. The siege tank's turning right back around. Also does a great job scouting with the, using the Vultures to provide that scouting information. So a massive amount of supply, but it's pretty well clumped up. And it's moving up against a pretty well spread out clumped army on the opposite side. Corsair is moving forward. Some D-Web dropped on a pretty significant chunk right there. Will it be enough? The Zealots getting pretty far afield. And the Dragoons marching in, able to clear out a lot else as well. And that D-Web actually catching all three of those siege tanks. Fortunately, the D-Web also working against these two Dragoons. And fortunately for Byaxter, well, he's able to clear out a lot of siege tanks and able to maintain a decent supply cap, but able to clear midfield. But in the meantime, Klaus has grabbed that 9 o'clock. Byaxter's grabbed the 3 o'clock. Bottom right being denied at least by a Vulture. Otherwise. And I still kind of like Klaus's position here. He's making his way pl towards plus three, plus two. That three o'clock is there, but not established. And the SCV is already starting to filter in to that nine o'clock base. So Klaus is going to have a pretty solid economy to work with. He's at a pretty good supply point. The D-Web did not overrun. Uh, did not lead to an overrun of the mid-ground plateau. And Klaus is going to have more opportunities to take shots. Also, I feel like that three needing to defend that three o'clock... Well, he can't do this. Walking in, uh, just kind of walking up to an attack force. Sieging and reestablishing, able to get some damage done. Reaver on the ground. Getting a bit of additional damage. Yeah, Klaus looks like he just wants to slow walk this. And this is where I feel like, again, the Arbiter would be a lot easier to manage. In fact, where are the Corsair? Were all the Corsair dispatched in the last fight? I'm wondering if, in fact, they were. Trying to see... Yeah, so it's just pure gateway units right this second. To try to press this back, which is not what you want. Although this is a lot of units ahead. So, workers trying to make their way out to the 3 o'clock. By Axter now charging in from kind of two points, trying to keep a wide angle here. And it looks like this is just enough of a supply differential that the Zealot's able to get in deep on top of those siege tanks. Defense Matrix... On the rest of this, and there's this is going deep into the line, so Byaxter might have enough dragoons to push all the way up to the high ground opposite side. Especially with the zealot reinforcement. Yeah, they're running up. There's no more mines, so Klaso overstepping. <clears throat> so whereas I was saying, like, oh man, this might be a bad situation just because it's all gateway units. Byaxter proving me wrong and able to just pile drive a lot of this attack force, although it looks like he is gonna be able to clean up the remnants, particularly after the mine drags. But after an army reset. Do we have enough gateways? A lot of gateways and some more Corsairs being built. Looks like some workers are going to be able to get at the, to that 3 o'clock base. Unmolested. Huh. We'll see how the... We'll see how this plays out from here. Vulture going to be able to stymie that base take. Right there, some more troops pushing up mid-map. 9 o'clock getting more saturated from the main. So it's still... It's 3 base versus 4 base still. Which puts by extra in an okay position. He's still 20 supply up. It's anybody's game still. But plus three weapons is just a little bit away from finishing. And this is where I again I feel like the trouble becomes from by extra 
once siege tanks get up on any of these high grounds, it can be very, very challenging to evict a Terran. And so that three o'clock base exposed. And by extra, not in position to engage it. So I think that's just going to be a forfeit three base and potentially that top right base as well. Unless those Corsairs sweep in and really change the tune rapidly. And Zealots has got to walk across a massive minefield. So the Corsairs here, this is a lot to manage. So Corsair is moving in. Going to deweb some of those rear siege tanks. The Zealots clearing out and they're getting distracted and attacking at kind of a raw angle right into the mines. And there's not enough Dragoons behind this otherwise. These siege tanks have been dewebbed. These siege tanks have been dewebbed though. But there's just not a lot, lot left for Biaxter otherwise. Other problem for Corsair is they eat up a lot of the supply count. Now all of a sudden Biaxter down 20 supply in that 3 o'clock base under heavy threat. <clears throat> One thing for Corsair, though, is I guess you can transition to Carrier pretty easily. But that 3 o'clock base getting wiped out. Supply lead for Klausow at this stage. That's his plus one weapons is online. But Byaxter right now needs to just hurry and try to pile the troops on and hope for the best. And right now it does not look like that's working out. Klausow just wiping out the reinforcements as they come in. So 3 o'clock base is gone. The right-hand corridor, and that's going to be an at-risk nexus top right as well. Bioxia is so now it's three base versus three base, which is in Klauso's favor. Klauso has a foothold across the right, a massive minefield in the middle, and now finally we've got to swap back to Arbiter with Psystorm for Bioxia, but it might be too little too late. He's down 30 supply. The upgrades are very much in Klauso's favor. And the D-Web has delayed the inevitable, but has not halted a lot of these base drops. And the Siege Tanks continue to press forward along that right-hand edge. And Byaxer continues to move some troops in piecemeal to absolutely get wrecked along that interior corridor. Starting to back up and regroup now. Klaus going to hit 200 supply before him. It looks like now sweeping up building a command center in place. So this is... I'm going to say at this stage, it's Klaus's game to lose. And I think Byaxter, if he had opted to not go for the D-Web play, would have had more success out of this. He's getting the Kaldanian core upgrade to try to equalize things, but we already also have some science vessels out in the field with EMP on the research, and they're going to be there in equal numbers to those Arbiters, so it's going to be tough. Klaus is starting to press forward. He's got a massive siege tank line to work with. So testing things forward, trying to draw Byaxter into his attack field. He does have, so there are still six Corsairs sitting here to maybe interrupt this, but there's also just a massive amount of mines and not, so what, we got maybe five siege tanks exposed, five siege tanks and a handful of vultures that can be repositioned to... This is basically a killing field mid-map here for Klauso. He's also going to have that command center up and able to grab that top right. That's going to put him at a massive economic advantage over Byaxter. So Byaxter hits is at 200 supply. He's 22 workers down. Three bases against soon to be four. So he needs to get a... So these D-Webs need to do something magical here in a second. Otherwise, it is going to... Klaus is just going to be able to sit back and starve... A lot of this out. So the D web moving up. Remember the siege tanks are D web midfield, but that's not stopping a lot of the mines. And again, you can see the dragoons taking shots midfield in the space of this. And there's just too much to D web. That being said, the D web is hitting quite a lot. And by actually recognizing he just doesn't have enough, that's going to be GG. Oh, I honestly wonder what the outcome of this match would have been had the research not been Corsair and instead a quick Arbiter play instead. But we're going to go into a game four right here. Klauso up 2-1. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.